two awards meeting to order. We have a physical quorum represented by Ricky Erickson, Laura Shepes, Haibu, and myself. We also have Joe Urbano joining us online. The Office of General Counsel is represented by Rebecca Levee. Budget is represented by Stephanie Neely. Cecil, did you receive any public comment via email? No public comments received. Thank you. Let the record show that we did not receive any public comment. I'll pause for a moment to allow callers joining us online to unmute and speak up. Hearing no comments, we'll proceed with today's regular agenda. We have items one through seven that have been reviewed by procurement and budget. These items are now ready to be reviewed by the awards committee, beginning with item one. All right. Representing the minutes from October 20th, 2022 awards committee meeting. Are there any comments or corrections to be discussed? All right. May I get a motion to approve award item one? So moved. And a second? Second. We have a motion from Laura Sheppes, a second from Ricky Erickson. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Minutes are approved as presented. I'll pass it over to Jenny McCollum, our Chief Procurement Officer, to present each of the remaining items. Uh, but uh, I will note that we have a special 2022 Ambassador and Volunteer of the Year celebration scheduled for this morning. So I'll ask Jenny to begin with item seven, and then we'll circle back to items two through six. Sure thing. Thank you. Through the Chair, Ward number seven is a renewal. We have uh, the Government Relations Consulting Services. Um, this is for a consulting firm that is located in the state of Florida and in Washington, D.C. Uh, to represent JA's interests in regards to legislative, regulatory, and executive branch policies and, and issues at the state and federal level. The Vogel Group LLC is our recommended awardee in the amount of 384,000. Uh, this will take us through September 30th of 2024. Uh, so this request is for a two-year renewal and the monthly retainer is 16,000. Any questions or comments? All right, seeing none, I'll pass it back to the chair for a vote. Thank you, Jenny. May I get a motion to approve award item seven? Joe Arpano, so moved. And a second? I vote second. We have a motion from Joe Orpano, a second from Hai Vu. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion is adopted. I'll pass it back to Jenny to present award item two. Thank you. Through the chair, award number two is an invitation for bid. Um, this is for the Blanding Pump Station uh, location. It has reached its capacity and its uh, electrical equipment needs to be upgraded to its current standards. Um, and so these improvements uh, together with a new pump station will prevent future sanitary sewer overflow. PBM Constructors Inc. is our recommended awardee in the amount of $4,707,449.90. This will be expected to be completed November of 2024. <laughs> Uh, we received two bids on this one, um, and again, uh, you'll see this quite a, quite a bit. We've got a lot of work on the water wastewater side. Um, the current schedules, workloads, you know, there's reasons for not participating. Uh, we are seeing the award amount come in almost about 15% higher, um, mainly due to the electrical instrumentation and components. And then I'll note lastly that there is an uh, alternate access to the driveway that's not being awarded at this time. Uh, it's pending easement uh, acquisition approval, but this alternate you know, was not a part of our total bid price. Uh, if they want to add that later, they can come back or, or use the 10% or supplemental work. So we've got some options if they want to add that in later. I'm going to pause there and see if you have questions. Hey, Jenny, this is Hi. I want to clarify. It seems that this is an award for two pump stations, Robich uh, Lane and Landing Boulevard. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, 
Any other questions or comments? All right, I'll pass it back to the chair for a vote. Thank you, Jenny. May I get a motion to approve award item two? I would so moved. And a second? Second. We have a motion from Hai Vu, a second from Laura Chepis. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion is adopted. I'll pass it back to Jenny to present award item three. Thank you. Through the chair, award number three is a request for proposal. This is for general engineering services for our substation. Um, this is a supplement to our JEA and health engineering resources. Uh, there are three recommended awardees. We've got Chen Moore and Associates, Inc. in the amount of 1015000 Worley Group, Inc. Uh, in the amount of 609000 and then Litos Engineering LLC in the amount of 406000 So this is a three-year award with two one-year optional renewals. Um, so this award will take us through October of 2025. You can see we had good participation. We had eight proposals that were received. They were scored on professional staff experience, design and work approach, company experience, et cetera. Um, these are, this is CCNA, so uh, the, the price was, and the rates were negotiated after we looked at the most um, qualified um, per the statute. And I'll note that um, JEA, you know, doesn't have a set forecast for when each engineering project will be released or the total project amounts to be awarded <laughs> to these engineering firms. Um, beyond the first few fiscal years. Uh, so preliminarily, we'll fund these contracts based on the engineer uh, estimates for projects known at this time, and we'll return to the awards committee to add funds to the contract to fund work as projects are released and the work scopes are, are defined. So we do issue these on task orders. Um, the work may be awarded based off the contracted rates, but also based off a of specialty. Um, however, in general, the highest evaluated company will be awarded more of the work. And lastly, we're seeing about 12% increase in our rates. Um, but the, when we compare to the historical rates of this contract, that, those are based in uh, 2018. And so that 12, about 12% increase um, is deemed reasonable. Uh, since it has been quite some time since the last time we did this out. And then I'll note that we do have uh, CPI price adjustments annually in this contract, um, but we do have them capped at 6%. Any questions or comments? Jenny, it's Joe. Um, I hate to bring this up, but <laughs> I feel compelled to. Uh, Latos, or Lido, however you pronounce that, they were one of the consultants subcontracted during the IT, the infamous mm -hmm. ITN process. They were fully paid. I assume their relationship's back on good footing because they're being awarded, but I'm just asking the question. Is that question for legal? Uh, well, yeah, or 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 really for the for the team, whoever. Gabor, if Daryl's on the call, or or Ricky can mm -hmm. address it. No, let's let me let me do this. Oh, Gabor, can you please uh, speak a little bit into this? Are you on the call? So, hey, Pedro, wow. this, this, this is Daryl. I'm on a call. Now go ahead, Daryl. Go ahead. You can go ahead and answer any concerns to me. I think it's a good point we need to discuss. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, this, this, this contract is purely for the technical and, and evaluations. We're basically from an all technical perspective with transmission and substation engineering. So, um, personally, the business on, on my side, I don't have any, um, any knowledge of what was you know, the past Lido's deal with the, you know, with that portion of it. I think that's probably more of a legal end, but 
I just wanted to mention that on this evaluation, it was purely on a technical base and they were evaluated as such. Okay. Thank you, Darrell. This is I don't know if Rebecca could address that or it, I, this happened several years ago. I just happened to see the name and I just looked at a spreadsheet and they did get paid. There were some consultants that whose payments were being disputed. They were not one of those. So uh, I, I, I'm not sure Rebecca can add anything to that, but I, I just merely bring it up. Right, so and my question would be, because I'm not familiar with the background behind this company, but were they actually um, suspended or debarred from um, participating no. in solicitations? No, it's just the manner that they were engaged was questioned because they were hired through the law firm. They weren't directly engaged by JEA. But, but they were vetted through that process of unpaid invoices and determined that their services, uh, the payment was warranted for their services. So uh, I, I'm only bringing it up because of the history with, with the firm. So, so Joe, to help you from my perspective, and I'll let Rebecca jump in. Uh, I understand your concern, and I think what the team from my side, we are, Focusing on a specific technical skill sets that is specific for design. I do want to revisit later on, but for this particular request, I think we're not committing for a large amount of money. We'll keep in mind right. um, your okay. feedback to make sure that we're getting we're getting what we expect. Uh, I'm comfortable with that, Pedro. Thank you. Thank you. And, and thank you to Daryl as well. Hey, and no problem, Joe, and, and Pedro as well. I uh, just wanted to follow up and make one comment. And Lidos also have an existing uh, contract on a technical end with protection and controls that was recently awarded as well. So I think this is it's not just our contract on a technical end, but it's, uh, it's just uh, on the technical side for transmission and substations. But Lidos do have a recent contract with protection and control. So I think all in all, I think we're all on the up and up on that portion of it because I think to get to where we're at with the existing contract with Lidos on the protection and controls, there wasn't any issues at that point Terrific. as well. Terrific. We're good. We'll continue. We'll continue to manage. Thank you, Joe, for that feedback. Rebecca, I don't know if you were about to share something else, but I'll turn it back over to you. No, I don't have anything else to share. I'll just note that, um, you know, this seems to be a question about um, some past performance issues. I'm, I'm, again, I'm not very familiar with the background here, um, but legally speaking, there isn't any reason why you couldn't award them a contract. And, and given that you've already gone through the um, evaluation process, um, I think at this point um, it would be it would be wiser to uh, proceed and, I, and presumably these have t these issues have been taken into account as part of the evaluation. I'm fine with that, Rebecca. Thank you. And, and this is Ricky. Just want to make sure, um, unless Daryl corrects me, we really haven't had performance issues with Lados. It was they were contracted by a firm during the ITN to do a job and they did that job. Um, they were really not a performance issue documented with the firm. They're just huge. They're worldwide. They have a yeah. lot of strong technical expertise. That's why we allowed them yeah. to do it in the first place. Thanks, Rick. To, to that point, it, it was determined that the service was performed and, and 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 they were paid. So I, I I only bring it up because of the manner in which they were uh, procured right. during the ITN. Th thanks, Ricky. I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem, Joe. Hey, this is hi. This is really uh, a question for the team. Did we consider expanding the field to four engineers because the score the the, the score for the Fourth rank firm was so close. Uh, and I know that we may be set on just three, uh, three firms. Um, 
We and, did. That's and, a great question. And I'm okay with three. Sorry. Just, just ask that question. If we we did consider expanding the bill to four versus three. Um, hey, this, yes. is, this is Rodney Lovren here. We had, we had kind of talked through it, you know, and when a score is that close, then you start looking at things like um, dollar amount of past work performed and um, Lido's would have been if had there been a tie where they in there, they were that close um, Lido's would have been um, the one that would have been awarded on the basis of them having less dollars in, in the previous terms in performance. So um, if it was a tie, it would have gone to Lido's anyways. I know it's only two tenths of a point difference. And so um, that that's why um, obviously we're, we're still with Lido's because they, they were above the midpoints and had they been tied, they, they um, would have won on dollar value. And, and when we talk with the business, the number of contracts and, and the number of companies that you have, you know, when you start getting more companies involved, you know, you, you start to have a little, um, I guess, uh, um, dealings with a bunch more businesses when you're trying to perform engineering work. And that just tends to fragment things. So, um, in our perspective, just sticking with the three was better than, than adding additional ones. I yeah. think also it's important to note, Rodney, I believe, and just correct me if I'm wrong, the solicitation that we put out on the street said we would award up to three contracts. So sticking to the basis of award and the intent of the original, um, we stuck with, with those terms. That's right. Yep, I mean, thank you. And I understand, yeah, if um, it's really on a, for three firms, it's not a lot of money being awarded. We spread it to four, then it's not a lot of work. It can be, it can be done, so. Uh, I All right, some good discussion. I'm going to pass it back to the chair for a vote. Thank you, Dan. May I get a motion to approve award item three? Brittany, so moved. And a second? Hi, a second. Oh, I move, I move each, Jeff. <laughs> we have a motion from, the... Ricky, from Ricky Erickson, a second from Hi, Boo. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, motion is adopted. I'll pass it back to Jenny to present award item four. Thank you. Through the chair, award number four is a piggyback. This is off the Flor uh, Florida Sheriff's Association contract. Um, this is for trailer mounted generators to provide resiliency for the JEA water wastewater pump stations uh, and two replacement units for facilities. Mid Florida Diesel Inc is the first recommended awardee in the amount of $408,320. And then we also have the BAT Power Systems in the amount of $306,130.02. We expect um, to receive these right around the beginning of hurricane season, which was important. Um, and using this piggyback also helped us receive these faster than we would have um, if we had gone to bid. And then we'll just note that um, we, the last time we bid these out, we compared those prices to the FSA contract and they were deemed reasonable. I'll pause there. Questions, comments? All right, I'll pass it back to the chair for a vote. <laughs> May I get a motion to approve award item four? So moved. And a second? Second. Joe Arfano, second. We have a motion from Laura Sheppis, a second from Joe Arfano. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion is adopted. I'll pass it back to Jenny to present award item five. Thank you. Through the chair, award number five is an invitation for bid. Um, this is electrical general contracting work to install a 4,160 tie circuit between units seven and eight at Kennedy Generating Station. The recommended awardee is Cogburn Brothers Inc. or Bros Inc. I'm talking to my nine-year-old. Um, when they say bra, uh, I just had a chuckle, sorry. I digress. Uh, the amount is three 
$151,450. We are expected to have this completed April 15th, 2023. Um, we only received one bid on this. Uh, we did have five uh, prime contractors confirm participation and communicate to us prior to bid that they were planning to submit. Um, but then once uh, we did put this out on the street, uh, they declined to submit, stating that the project's uh, limited size, a quick turnaround, and constraints on current resources as reasons for not submitting. Um, due to the criticality of the project, though, uh, to support stock operations, we elected to open the bid and not extend um, based off of the feedback we received from the other vendors. I won't go into all the details. Um, they're in the background, but I'll just note that in engineering, well, back in 2021, our Unit 7 uh, station service transformer had a catastrophic failure due to repeat close and, and faults. Um, so a study was done, and it was determined that both Unit 7 and 8 can be online at full load with just one station service transformer. Um, and so we are, are moving forward with this award, this project to tie those units together, those sets which gear together to let us do that while we wait for our backup transformer to arrive. Um, it is on order, uh, but this will uh, help us move forward before that one arrives and comes in. So spring of 2023. Questions, comments? Hey, Jenny, this is Ricky. Mm -hmm. um, just a minor edit uh, on the screen that we show had a catastrophic failure due to repeated. Catastrophic is a little misleading. Um, what do you think of when you hear catastrophic? So fire yeah. engines, fire, yeah. 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 Destruction. that kind of stuff. That didn't happen. Uh, could we just say experience a failure? And, and sure thing. Remove that for significant. Yeah, I mean, it, it failed, um, but it didn't call fire trucks and ambulances and things of that nature to show up. So just a request on that. Appreciate that, no Ricky. Problem. When, when I read it, I, I felt that it was really catastrophic, but I didn't know because I wasn't here. So appreciate your input on it. <laughs> <laughs> so long story short, the unit failed. It was a 25, 30 year old unit. It failed. It made for good reading, though. Yeah, I thought it might make your Like, I've known been here two minutes at that point. For me, for that. But maybe it didn't just stop working. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's right. So the point being, without, without it, we couldn't run the unit. And that's a problem. Yes. So uh, this project is to enable either unit to be started from one unit. So that, that's a definite advantage for the company and the flexibility yes. for, the, for the soccer team and the generators. Thanks, Jim. So I You're have, welcome. I have a question I, because I don't understand the approach. You know, the, the paragraph just before the request, it says we removed the LVs from the contract, which is number one concern. But it seems from the explanation, the driver for that was to get the price reduction so that we can bring the bid amount under the budget estimate. Which it should be a driver we just report the, the cost as they are. So, could someone explain to me why we removed that the LD from the from the contract language and and probably take out? Sure. Yeah, this is this, this is Rodney. Um, yeah, so we did uh, remove the LDs, and when I wrote that, it, it says. The bid reduction is it brings it under the budget estimate. Um, additionally, there was some, um, and I guess I'll have to ask the business to to get into it and explain that. But there was some minor scope re revisions that were done, like in, increasing the length of cables and things like that, that drove the price a little bit higher than what was expected. Um, but removing the LDs, the business is also comfortable with that, um, considering the the outage and, and the likely time frame that they're going to have 
Um, and Cogbird's performance, obviously, they're they're pretty comfortable with their performance in the past. So uh, we felt it was it was safe to move, remove the LDs, and then you know 10%. Um, usually the budget estimates don't include LDs, so if they don't put contingency in their their base budget estimate, they wouldn't have had the extra 10% included. So just to make it um, a more consistent uh, comparison, we said, okay, what happens if we take out the 10% LDs? And we said, all right, well. Price goes down by 10%. It's was like, well, that, that's reasonable. They perform, so why not remove them? So it was um, just a judgment call between the business and um, and basically our discussion internally. Hi, this is Jamila. Um, I would like to add some about the LDs. So we went from 30 days to 45 days. The outage um, at Kennedy lengthened um, during the time that we were going through out this bid. And in our cons consultation with the director, they felt um, that 45 day was adequate and it, we will be able to complete the project with the reduction in this in the in the cost savings. So um, that's how we went from 30 days to 45 days. And considering the, the dollar amount in the contract, I don't think I have a, a big issue with that. This decision, and we know the cost for track worker. And what I am suggesting though is to just um strike out the the language about just to bring the bid amount uh in under the budget budget estimate. It just seems to imply to me that that's what we did in order to, to get under the budget estimate. That's it's not really the case. It, it resulted in that, but that's just a you know the result of that not the driver. I mean, not the driver. Just, just to remove any implication that we we had to do something under the contract or to the contract yeah. in order to bring it yeah. um, to the budget estimate. Yeah, this this right. Yeah, I'll, I'm in the actual word document right now, removing okay. um, the, the the dramatic language for catastrophic <laughs> and um, also <laughs> I'll also strike that that part about to bring under amount. So, thank you. Rodney, I might also note in the award document, um, this you can confirm, but likely we would have a, a bond for this work um, as a reduction in risk to JEA. So if you want to, if that is the case, it should be. Um, we, we do. You should add that in there as well. And it just kind of rounds out, you know, that paragraph. Sure. Will do. Thank you. This is Todd Skinner. Um, quick comment. There's also in the paragraph with the catastrophic failure, it talks about a rented spare transformer. That's it's our transformer um, that's being used, but it's also a, a spare for one of our major customers. So uh, if it's if it's okay, I mean, I can get with Rodney after this call to to straighten that up a little bit. I don't think it changes things dramatically. <laughs> Sure. It won't change it catastrophically either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm removing that word from my vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. You can only use that once share. every decade, Rodney. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I wonder overall, you know, if this is, if, if LDs, you know, contract, it, I wonder if it's worth 10%, you know, if, if it will apply to other projects. You know, I always wonder what the cost of both that is. And for this, it's 10%, so it's interesting at least. <laughs> yeah, th this is right. So, so on small projects like this, I mean, there's, there, you know, there's, there's not a lot of fluff in it to, to do something. Mm -hmm. If it's a multi-million dollar project um, in a longer term, you know, companies calculate risk and, and impact LDs differently. But, you know, in this case, they're like, you know, if you're going to do that, well, just, we'll just make it a straight pass through. So um, when we talk to them, we're like, okay, well, we got more time. It doesn't make sense to drive the cost up for no reason or unnecessarily. Thanks, Robin. All right. I'll pass it back to the chair for a vote. Thank you, Danny. A motion to approve award five with amendments. Hi, Bruce. So moved. 
Second. Second. We have a motion from Hayabu, a second from Ricky Erickson. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? I'll pass it over to Jenny to present our final award item for today. Thank you. Through the chair, ward number six is a contract increase. Uh, Oliver warned you guys this was coming back uh, a couple weeks ago. This is for our water wastewater capital program management uh, with Jacobs Engineering Group. Uh, this increase is for um, the Ponce, which one is Ponce de Leon replacement well in the amount of $1,754,627. Uh, nothing else has changed from the last time. I won't read through the whole background, um, but this one was um, still in the works when we brought the FY, the remainder of the FY23 um, projects to you all a couple of weeks ago. So this should round us out. Any questions, comments? I have a question mainly for a uh, contract team or legal team. We made a there's an exhibit page on page eighty two. Um, that's the contract, and then they wanted to make it clear that this contract is for Jacobs Engineering, and they identified the contract for Don CH two um, CH two on Hill, which is a subsidiary of Jacobs. They didn't really say that in the contract, but that's. Jacobs kind of to come over. <clears throat> and then they made clear that Jacobs is going to be responsible for the program management of it. Um, so I guess the first question is, oh, are we all, is legal and contract okay with that? They didn't really spell out that CHTML, they didn't disclose that CHTML as a subsidiary of Jacobs. Um, and and in their task, task nine, they mentioned, they didn't mention CSTML at all. They said that Jacobs will be doing the design of the well and, and, uh, and wellhead, um, which is different than what they said here in the contract where CSTML Hill would be doing as a contractor who would be solely responsible for that. That's all the language um, uh, for the design. Hey, hi, this is Heather Beard. Um, mm -hmm. I see I see what you're saying. Um, typically, the way these task orders work is, I, I think we just took the amendment for Jacobs to amend the contract for the fiscal year 23 project. So this wasn't included. Um, so essentially what we do is we increase the contract for the total amount, and then these task orders are issue, issued separately for the project. So if you're saying the corporate entities are not lined up right, then we need to look at that before this task order is signed. And I can yeah, just pull back with you after this. No, I because I don't know. I, don't, I, I, I haven't seen the, the contract languages and all that. That's really, that's why I asked the question to make sure that that uh, you are okay with it because I don't remember when the contract with Jacobs was signed at that time. It was CH2 on Hill or um, Jacobs. Um, yeah, Jacobs has the total contract, the overall, ar the overarching contract. And so this task order, it looks like their subsidiary might do the work, but you're saying Jacobs doing the I guess we need to figure out who's doing what is the question. Yeah, yeah and I didn't realize the CH2 on Hill is still in existence and they're they, the amendment clearly show that the contractor is still held. So I don't know enough to <laughs> to to say much, but um, my question is really just really make sure the team and make sure all the I's and all the T's across as far as contract language is concerned. Okay. Well, Hi. Go ahead. Sorry, this is Dan Crook. Uh, from what I remember. Uh, all of the task orders uh, that deal with construction mention CH2M Hill uh, acting as a subsidiary of Jacobs because CH2M Hill has a contractor license and Jacobs doesn't. So CH2M Hill coordinates the construction because this is the well replacement uh, is under the task order, under the contract Jacobs is doing it as a design build. 
Uh, so they're responsible for construction as well. And that's why there's references to CH2M Hill in, in the task order. Um, but the contract is with Jacobs. Right. Now, if you go to the, in there, task order attached to this after the amendment. Um, yeah, just keep scrolling down. Uh, <coughs> Yeah, starting around page 104-ish. See, sir. All right, so here's their task order, right? Is it not this the task order? You go scroll back up, it says task order. And can you do a search for CH2 to see if there's any mentioning of CH2 Yeah, it's um, on page one of four um, at the top there where it talks about Jacobs will contract the work. Okay, so this is where it says to, that it's fully on subsidiary. Okay, great. And under the task, um, is there anything else that says Jacobs, CH2 of the will, will design? It says Jacobs will design in this task order. That's what I'm trying to point out the discrepancy between the the amendment, the contract language, and the task order. Just want to make sure we're all okay. See, so if you keep hitting next, just see, I wanted to see if. Um, keep going. So, so there's no other language within that task order that says CH2 would be the design. You read through the task order, it would be Jacobs is performing the design. Right? This part's outside of that task order. This is the contract. Yeah, this is the amendment. Here, right. So maybe the task order just needs to go to Jacobs and not mention CH from Hill. Well, let's, we can look at that and make sure it's all lined up. Yeah, I think it's, that's, I guess, that just all the, Paperwork part of it that we know it's going to be doing the work uh, personnel wise. We'll, we'll take that offline. Hi, as we work through the contract on the back end um, to make sure that's all aligned. If what Dan was saying, the you know CH to him Hill is actually going to be performing this task order. If it's construction, we need to just clean it up to make sure that's very clear. Um, that the contract is with Jacobs and that they're going to be doing almost, if it's design build, um, then that build portion of that, we'll just make it clear that the subsidiary is going to be doing that work. We'll go back and fix that. So we can take that offline, make sure it's clear. Any other questions? All right. I'll pass it back to the chair for a vote. May I get a motion to approve the award item six? So moved. And a second. Five, seven. We have a motion from Laura Sheppis, a second from Joe Arpano. All those in favor say aye. So aye. aye. All those opposed, motion is adopted. The entire agenda representing items one through seven is approved for October 27, 2022. Is there any other business to come before the awards committee at this time? All right. Seeing none, we're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So here at Florida.